These are thoracic radiology board review cases, and the topic of this group is lung cancer and other related neoplasms. What's the abnormal finding on this chest radiograph? Here's a coronal MPR of the patient's chest CT. Please provide at least three differential diagnoses. On this image, we see a confluent infiltrating middle mediastinal mass that completely fills the aorta pulmonary window. Sources of a middle mediastinal mass can be recalled using our 3 2 1 rule as summarized on this table. Masses arising from the trachea or esophagus, bronchopulmonary foregut malformations, and thyroid masses usually don't exhibit such a confluent and infiltrating appearance. A confluent and infiltrating middle mediastinal mass like this one would most likely be a mediastinal hematoma arising from a bleeding blood vessel or lymphadenopathy. Recall that the top causes of bulky mediastinal lymphadenopathy can be divided between three main malignant causes and three main inflammatory non-malignant causes. CLL and pneumoconiosis-related lymphadenopathy tend to be not so confluent and infiltrative as this, which means that our differential diagnosis for this particular case would be the list here. Lymphoma, lymphatic metastases, small cell lung cancer, sarcoid granulomatous infection, or mediastinal hematoma. This particular case is an example of small cell lung carcinoma. Name at least two perineoplastic syndromes associated with small cell lung cancer and their symptoms. The perineoplastic syndromes associated with small cell lung cancer are SIADH, or Syndrome of Inappropriate Antidiuretic Hormone Secretion, which can manifest as headache due to hyponatremia, confusion, nausea, or vomiting. Cushing syndrome, whose classic features are numerous but include things like weight gain, systemic hypertension, moon faces, and irregular menses for starters. And Eaton-Lambert, which can manifest as proximal limb weakness. You observe a solid 11 millimeter right middle lobe lung nodule on a baseline lung cancer screening CT, for which you assign a lung rads 4A score. What would be the recommended management in this scenario? Recommended management options for a lung cancer screening CT with a lung rads 4A score are a one-month follow-up CT if the nodule is being encountered for the very first time and you believe it might be infectious or inflammatory, PET CT if the solid part is at least 8 millimeters in size, and LDCT in three months if the PET is not positive. This case turned out to be a carcinoid tumor. What's the five-year survival rate for people who've been treated for typical lung carcinoid? The five-year survival rate for typical lung carcinoid is around 85 to 90 percent. However, the five-year survival rate for people who have been treated for atypical lung carcinoid is about 50 to 60 percent. Typical carcinoids grow slowly and rarely metastasize. They make up around 90 percent of lung carcinoids. Atypical lung carcinoids are much more rare, but when compared to typical car carcinoids, Atypical lung carcinoids grow faster and are more likely to metastasize. Typical and atypical carcinoids can be distinguished histopathologically by the number of mitoses per 2 square millimeter field and the presence or absence of necrosis. Typical versus atypical is one way carcinoid tumors are classified. Another way carcinoids are classified is according to their location in the lung, central versus peripheral. Most central and most peripheral carcinoids are typical carcinoids. Atypical carcinoids can present both centrally and peripherally, though atypical car carcinoids tend to occur slightly more often as peripheral lesions than central lesions.
there are three nodular opacities on this chest radiograph. What's your best explanation for each one? Nodular opacities A and B are both relatively round. They're both well circumscribed along their medial, lateral, and inferior margins, but their superior margins are indistinct. They're also relatively symmetrically positioned. All of these features are characteristic for overlapping nipple shadows. Nodular opacity C has an oblong appearance and is circumscribed all 360 degrees around and suspicious for a lung nodule. What's your differential diagnosis for this patient? There are multiple bilateral heterogeneous lung opacities. These opacities are consolidative in the most severe areas and consist of a mixture of ground glass and interstitial opacities in the not as severe areas. The differential diagnosis in this case would be drawn by the most dominant and specific imaging feature the consolidation. The consolidation here is non-diffuse in distribution and may either be acute or chronic, which results in this differential diagnosis, which is basically a union of our differential diagnoses for non-diffuse acute consolidation and chronic consolidation. This case is an example of multifocal lung adenocarcinoma, and the consolidative regions corresponded to regions of invasive mucinous adenocarcinoma. What are the four major histological types of primary lung cancer? The four major types of primary lung cancers are adenocarcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, large cell carcinoma, and small cell carcinoma. The first three are referred to together as non-small cell lung carcinoma. This pie chart here illustrates the relative distributions of each primary lung cancer type and how non-small cell lung cancers outnumber small cell lung cancers by around five to one. What's your best diagnosis for this lung nodule? The imaging features of this left upper lobe lung nodule are notable for not only calcification in a peripheral distribution, but a few small regions of fat attenuation within it. We can compare the darkest regions of this lung nodule with the subcutaneous fat in this patient's chest wall and see that they are similar in attenuation. The presence of macroscopic fat within a circumscribed lung nodule is pathognomonic for a pulmonary hamartoma. Pulmonary hamartomas and pulmonary chondromas are two benign lung neoplasms that folks sometimes confuse with each other, so let's recap their differences. Pulmonary hamartomas are benign neoplasms composed of cartilage, connective tissue, smooth muscle, fat, and bone. Pulmonary chondromas are benign neoplasms that consist of entirely cartilage with or without calcified or ossified components. What three elements constitute Carney's triad? The three elements of Carney's triad are pulmonary chondroma, GI stromal tumor, and extraadrenal paraganglioma. What's your best diagnosis for this lung nodule? The well-circumscribed lung nodule in this patient's left lower lobe is of the same attenuation as the subcutaneous fat in the patient's chest wall. The presence of macroscopic fat in a circumscribed lung nodule informs us that this nodule is a pulmonary hamartoma. Which of the following statements about this lung nodule are true? The true statement here is B. Although pulmonary hamartomas are usually classified as benign neoplasms, 
they are probably more of a developmental anomaly than neoplasm. The other statements here are false. Pulmonary hamartomas are benign, and no follow-up CT surveillance is indicated. One more question. Which of the following statements about pulmonary hamartomas is true? The only true statement here is statement B. Fat is diagnostic for a pulmonary hamartoma when present. The other statements are false. Fat is visible in 30 to 50%, but not a majority of pulmonary hamartomas on CT. Also, most pulmonary hamartomas are peripheral. About 10% are central and less than 10% are endobronchial. This is a non-small cell lung cancer case. What's the lowest possible cancer stage this central lung cancer case may be? The imaging features of this chest CT are a central left lung mass that appears to invade the left hilum and mediastinum and a bulky mediastinal lymph node that almost certainly lies to the right of the left lateral tracheal wall. The left lateral tracheal wall is the boundary that distinguishes right from left mediastinal lymph nodes superior to the tracheal bifurcation, which makes the site of bulky mediastinal lymphadenopathy right-sided or contralateral to this left-sided primary lung cancer. Contralateral mediastinal lymphadenopathy results in a non-small cell lung cancer stage of at least 3B. Treatment options for stage 3B non-small lung cancers would not include surgical resection, but may include items listed here. Um, for example, chemo radiation followed by immunotherapy. What's your best diagnosis for this lung nodule? There are very small apparent internal lucencies within this lung nodule resulting in what folks would describe as pseudo-cavitation. This lung nodule is otherwise part solid in density with ground glass features and a very small internal solid component. This entire nodule with its pseudo-cavitation, its part solid appearance, may remind you of a fried egg. All of these features, part solid density, pseudo-cavitation, and a fried egg appearance are strongly suggestive for a diagnosis of minimally invasive adenocarcinoma. With minimally invasive adenocarcinoma, tumor cells spread along the framework of normal lung parenchyma without destroying it, which is one reason why air bronchograms are still visible in some minimally invasive adenocarcinomas, since the tiny airways within the tumor remain intact. Images A, B, C, and D represent examples of the four subtypes of lower-grade lung adenocarcinomas. Can you match each image with the appropriate subtype? If we proceed in order of increasing invasiveness, a good rule of thumb is that a typical adenomatous hyperplasias, a pre-invasive lung lesion, usually present as a pure ground glass lung nodule under five millimeters in size. Adenoma carcinoma, adenocarcinomas in situ usually present as a five millimeter or larger ground glass lung nodule. Minimally invasive adenocarcinomas usually present as a part solid lung nodule with both ground glass and small solid internal components. Lipidic predominant lung adenocarcinomas usually appear as a regional lung opacity with mixed ground glass and consolidative densities. Invasive mucinous adenocarcinomas usually present as a region of consolidation. As you can imagine, lipidic predominant and invasive mucinous lung adenocarcinomas may often be mistaken for other things like lung infection or alveolar hemorrhage when they're initially detected on imaging. In the four examples here, the first nodule was an adenocarcinoma in situ. The second nodule was a minimally invasive adenocarcinoma. The third case was lipidic predominant adenocarcinoma, and the fourth case was invasive mucinous adenocarcinoma. Historically, adenocarcinomas in situ, minimally invasive adenocarcinoma, lipidic predominant adenocarcinoma, and invasive mucinous adenocarcinomas used to be referred to in aggregate as bronchoalveolar carcinomas, or BACs. 
Which gene mutation is not commonly associated with lung adenocarcinoma? TP53, KRAS, and EGFR mutations are some of the most common gene mutations associated with lung adenocarcinoma. HER2 is a gene mutation associated with breast cancer. What's your differential diagnosis for this lung opacity? The finding in this case is an irregularly marginated region of consolidation with internal ear bronchograms. The consolidation is non-diffuse in distribution and could either be acute or chronic, which results in this differential diagnosis, which, as we saw earlier, is a union of our differential diagnoses for non-diffuse acute consolidation and chronic consolidation. The uniformity of the consolidation and absence of substantial ground glass opacities would convince me to eliminate alveolar hemorrhage and asymmetric pulmonary edema, and the non-peripheral um, tendency of this consolidation would lead me to eliminate pulmonary infarct, which leads these possible options um, for this particular lung opacity. What's your best guess as for its diagnosis? Honestly, any of the six items um, we listed would have been reasonable guesses, so don't beat yourself up if you don't get this question. Um, this particular opacity happened to represent a case of pulmonary lymphoma. Which of these statements about pulmonary lymphoma is true? The true statement here is B. Lung masses with preserved air bronchograms are a common finding when pulmonary lymphoma occurs. The other statements here are false. Primary pulmonary non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is rare and happens in only 0.4% of all lymphomas. Secondary involvement of the lung in patients with a history of lymphoma is more frequent, however, with an incidence of 25 to 40%. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma can on occasion uh, occur in the lung only with no mediastinal or hilar nodal involvement. Finally, the most common imaging presentations of pulmonary lymphoma are solitary or multiple lung nodules, masses, or mass-like consolidations that can range in size from anywhere from 5 millimeters to 8 centimeters. Um, another imaging presentation is a region of consolidation with poorly defined margins containing ear bronchograms that exists um, in a sub-segmental to lobar distribution. A third common imaging presentation is thickening of the bronchovascular bundles and interlobular septi. Diffuse ground glass opacities are an uncommon presentation for pulmonary lymphoma. And one last point, cases of pulmonary lymphoma presenting as a mass, um, in cases of pulmonary lymphoma presenting as a mass, cavitation is sometimes possible.